All right. We're still waiting for parts. Um, so I've been chipping away at this. Getting there. I think I'm probably being lazy. That's probably about as far as I'm going to go with it. But cleaned up pretty nice. I'm just going to prime it now and as soon as it dries out. But the uh, other thing I did today was I did pull the cable. And ordered up one from um, Wholesale Marine for, I don't know, 40 bucks. So, this one is moving, but it's pretty stiff. I mean, it's, it's working, but with all the work I'm putting into this, why, why frig around with uh, a cable that's probably not going to last much longer anyways. You can see, I think it's missing the rubber boot. It goes right there, and it's getting a little kinked has a bunch of bends in it and it's definitely hard to push through so 40 bucks it's pretty good insurance and uh so we're gonna prime it up and call it a day and go hit the golf course so i got all my seals in today i was about to throw everything back together and i just really didn't feel good about that lapping job i did and so basically i did the the same procedure i did before i just did it again and I feel way better about that now. You know, I didn't really take off any material per se, but you can see I definitely got that matte surface. It looks a lot better. Here's the other one that I haven't done the second round of yet. And you can see there's a, a big difference when I do it a, a second time. I think that perhaps my lapping compound is not quite aggressive enough, so I got to do a little bit extra, but... I just feel like this is probably more what you're looking for based on what I've seen online versus this. And uh, so we'll see how it works. I, I really don't feel like tearing this apart again. So I prefer I get it right the first time. Um, hopefully I didn't go too far here, but I don't think so. I don't think I really took off too much metal. So we'll do that. Do the other one and then... Uh, start putting everything back together here's my painted up out drive uh, pretty shoddy work i'd say but hey i got the corrosion off got most of the aluminum exposed primed it up painted it actually the paint matches pretty good um where is that paint i don't know i it's the volvo penta sx paint the silver really matches you can't even tell like this is original paint, this is spray paint, and it's really the same color, so hopefully it holds up. Um, started to go after this guy. You can see that I've started to clean up the skeg. I'll just, I'll never get all that pitting out of there, so we'll do the best we can. So that's that. So got my shims in here. Gonna start putting it all back together tonight, I would think. And um, torque it all back up and it's getting close. Okay, we've made a little bit of progress. Um, really just waiting on the painting stuff now. Let's see, I'm. Doing the touch up on the uh, the lower out there, the painting and prepping and sanding is really starting to slow me down. But last night I did uh, install the shifter. Ended up replacing the seal right here because I uh, I got one in the kit. I said why not? We'll have it out. Not too hard a job. Um, plenty of videos and write ups on that. That's a Pretty straightforward. Um, and I hooked it all up and also did the shimming. Uh, let's see here. So, seems to be shifting okay. Um, shimming, though, is pretty important. So, you can see these shims behind the screw right here. 
Um, so the procedure is pretty simple. Uh, take that screw out and take all the shims out off the screw. Here's what they look like. Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty little. But, so, and then the way I did it was, you know, I put my socket on here, and then I turned this back and for, or turned it the way it would go. Um, so, one thing you gotta do is on this, on this, um, shifter, you can see how as you turn it, it goes in and out, and that's because of the detents. You need to turn it, there's a special fixture that actually bolts up to this bolt and this bolt, and then has a through hole to hook up here, but really at the end of the day, I don't think you need that. You just need to turn this until you're at a position where it's pushed in the most. So you can see it just moved in the most that way. That's where you want to be, because that's pushing the shoe as far as it can into the clutch. All right, so then with the shims off, take this bolt, tighten it in until you get some resistance. In other words, the shoe is bottoming out in the clutch and this won't turn anymore. All right, and that is the point where you want to back this off until you have just, you've just escaped that play, that locking up and now it has free play. Okay, then take your feeler gauges, slide them behind the head of this nut and figure out what that distance is. All right, then what you want to do is take your shims. I don't know how thick they are, but basically you're going to add up the thickness of those shims until you are as close as you can be to that feeler gauge measurement, um, but don't go over it. So I had 23 thou. And my shims, I think, added up to 20 or something like that. But the next one was going to put me over. Or maybe that was 21. But the next shim was going to put me over. So that's the number I picked. Once you have that number and that amount of shims, add three more shims to that. Stack them all up. And there you go. Uh, I ended up having to take out one shim less than I had before I did this job so essentially I'm pushing that shoe in one shim one shims with further into the clutch which can only I would assume help with my engagement issue uh, because it'll push the clutch further in either direction due to the taper but that's the procedure and now I am just waiting for my top cover the paint to dry. Uh, they say, here's my new gasket. And as you can see, I got my shims here. Be very careful to center these on the bearing before you drop the cover on. Pretty important. Uh, they say to coat this gasket with some sealant. So I got my sealant here. I'm going to paint on both sides of the gasket when I drop it on. And then uh, close up the cover, and that will be it for the top end. One thing I did note was that I have a little bit of a gear oil leakage through this main seal in the back on the pinion. I did get one in the kit. This is what it looks like, the brown guy here. Unfortunately, that is not a job that I'm going to tackle today because, A, I can do it pretty or get to it pretty easy next time I pull the outdrive off. Uh, you literally pull the outdrive and then take these four bolts off and this slides right out. But B, the reason I'm not going to do it is because you have to pull the U-joints, which is no big deal. I got a U-joint tool. But as soon as you loosen the nut, the pinion nut in the back, while you're holding this yoke, there's a crush bearing in there, which you have to replace. And there's a bunch of issues with that where when you take it off you've got to press out this main bearing and that I believe is going to end up throwing off your shimming that you had going on here uh, and then when you put in the new crush bearing you actually have to give it a press first to start the crush and then you have to torque the pinion nut slowly while measuring the drag 
on the bearing with an inch pound torque wrench. I believe dial style is the only way you're gonna be able to do it. Um, but either way, it gets pretty involved and the biggest thing that scares me is throwing off the shimming between the pinion and the gears, which I'm pretty sure would be an issue if I press out the bearing. Although if I press it back in the original bearing, theoretically everything should go back to the same spot. But either way, for the amount of oil leakage I see in there, I'm going to let it ride. So that's where I'm at. Got my shift cable coming tomorrow and I'll put the final coat of paint tomorrow and then we'll be ready to start putting things together. So you got my zinc phosphate primer, just touched up the bad areas. Who knows if it'll last, but certainly a lot of elbow grease to get to that point. Uh, oh yeah, and I do have to replace all these seals, which won't take long at all. So that's it for now. All right, so I finished painting up the uh, lower unit today. Waiting for it to dry now. <clears throat> Cleaned up the anode. Uh, ground the paint where it connects, where these bolts are on both sides. Uh, make sure I had a really good connection. You really need that electrical connection between that, that anode and the housing. And then I wire brush that. Um, when you go to put the two halves together, according to the, the installation manual, the coupler needs to have this groove facing up. I don't believe it was like that when I took it apart, but uh, who knows? I don't remember anymore. It's been so long. Um, Yep, so just gonna clean up these seals, put the new o rings in, and um, got the new uh, the new rubber for the water tube. So that's gonna fix that dry rotted rubber issue. Got my cable in today too. And I will say that was probably the smartest thing I did here because this cable moves very, very, very easy compared to this one. Also came with the rubber boots. We'll have to see if we get to keep these or not, depending on if there's room. I should have room in the control, but I don't know about inside the uh, upper housing, whether or not I'll be able to keep this guy. It'd be nice if I could. I think I'll be able to keep that one, but we'll see. Obviously this one didn't have any boots on either side. Um, but yeah, it should be a direct drop in and I would say it moves about twice as easy as the, the previous cable. I mean you can see I'm just not even not even trying and that thing is moving. So highly recommend replacing that if you're going through all the trouble here because that old one will definitely cause issues. Oh what a mess. And uh, this guy's all bolted up, painted up ready to go uh, just waiting on his baby brother here and I'll throw the shift cable in the boat tonight let this cure and then tomorrow uh, slap it all back together and throw some oil in it fire it up get the oil mixing around make sure everything's working in the yard and then uh, probably take it out on a lake Sunday See if it strands me.